Good morning and welcome to St Saviour's Online. Today we have a great service for you. We have the wonderful guy preaching um, and bringing us the word this morning. And we have Stephen leading us in worship in a bit, uh, along with Beth later on as well. And not forgetting the return of the Brimbles with our family worship. But for now, let's pray as we start. Father, we thank you for this week gone by, all the ups and downs that we might have experienced, and we bring all of it to you this morning. We bring all of the, the things that we've experienced, the conversations that we've had, and uh, whatever's happened, and we bring it at your feet, and uh, we just want to praise you for who you are this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Yeah. 
Stephen. Well, we have a lot of exciting things coming up in the life of St Saviour's, so I am going to refer to my phone because I don't want to forget anything important. Starting off with tonight, the lovely Sarah Welch is going to be bringing us the talk for this evening as part of our summer series, summer Sunday series entitled Faith Over Fear, so do tune in for that later on. Also, the date of our um, postponed APCM has now been set for Sunday the 25th of October at 11 o'clock via Zoom. The electoral roll will be um, revised between the 26th of September and the 10th of October. So if you're not on it and would like to be on it, then please do email the church office and fill in the forms. Kids and young people, we hope that you've had a good summer and that as you've started back at school, that's been a really positive start. Um, thank you to Hannah who's been sending out the kids resources and continues to do so. We hope they'll help you enjoy and take part in the service. And for youth, um, Sonia and Sarah continue to run online sessions for the youth this week. Friday Night Youth has already started up again um, for years 6 to 13. Um, do email the youth team if you have any questions about that. And then Women of St Saviour's. Do get this date in your diary, Tuesday the 22nd of September at 8pm where the awesome Shirley Agar is going to be speaking on prayer, not to be missed and I hope to see you there. And then last but not least, Alan, you're getting licensed. Um, so Alan, our new vicar, will be licensed this Wednesday um, as Vicar of St Saviour's. Yay, we're so excited. Although the current restrictions means that we can only be um, a small ceremony, we're going to film it and make it available on YouTube at 7 p.m. that evening. Then on Sunday the 27th, straight after the online morning service, there'll be an opportunity to pray for Alan and Leah and the boys all over Zoom. All the details are gonna be in your church email um, newsletter. I'd like to introduce the Brimble family for our church family worship. Even though the people of Nineveh had been disobedient to God, they changed their ways and turned to God and turned away from evil. God saw this and changed his mind about them. Jonah was furious. He lost his temper and yelled at God. God, I knew it when I was back home. I knew this was going to happen. And that's why I ran off to Tarshish. I knew you were sheer grace and mercy, not easily anchored, rich in love and ready at the drop of a hat to turn your plans of punishment into a program of forgiveness. So God, if you won't kill them or kill me, I'm better off dead. Why you have to be angry about me? But Jonah just left. He went out of the city to the east and sat down in a sulk. He put together a makeshift shelter of leafy branches and sat there in the shade to see what would happen to the city. God arranged for a broad-leafed tree to spring up. It grew over Jonah to cool him off and get him out of his angry sulk. Jonah was pleased and enjoyed the shade. Life was looking up. Life is looking up! But then God sent a worm. By dawn of the next day, the worm had bored into the shade tree and it withered away. The sun came up and God sent a hot, blistering wind from the east. The sun beat down on Jonah's head and he started to faint. He prayed to die. I'm better off dead. <laughs> what right do you have to be angry about 
killed a shade tree. Plenty of pride. It's made me angry enough to die. What right do you have to decide if I can change my mind or not? You were happy about the tree I planted and then changed to be sad, even though you did nothing to get it. So why can't I change my feelings from anger to pleasure, saving 120,000 people if I want to? Thank you, Brimbles. That was awesome. We're now going to continue in worship with Stephen leading us, and then we'll have our reading from Julia, and then Guy will be bringing us the word. my mind 
Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his will his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all The first reading is Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10, to 4, verse 11. And I'm reading from the New International Version. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? 
That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said, I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and it died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? The second reading is Psalm 105 verses 1 to 6 and 37 to 45 and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Psalm 105 Go ahead and give thanks for all the glorious things he has done. Go ahead and worship him. Tell everyone about his wonders. Let's sing his praises. Sing and put all of his miracles to music. Shine and make your joyful boast in him, you lovers of God. Let's be happy and keep rejoicing no matter what. Seek more of his strength. Seek more of him. Let's always be seeking the light of his face. Don't you ever forget his miracles and marvels. Hold to your heart every judgment he has decreed. For you are his servants, the true seed of Abraham, and you are the chosen ones, Jacob's sons. At last, God freed all the Hebrews from their slavery and sent them away laden with the silver and gold of Egypt and not even one was feeble on their way out. Egypt was relieved at their exodus, ready to see them go, for the terror of the Lord of the Hebrews had fallen upon them. God spread out a cloud as shade as they moved ahead, and a cloud of fire to light up their night. Moses prayed, and God brought them quail to eat. He satisfied them with heaven's bread falling from the sky. He broke open the boulder and the waters poured out like a river in the desert. For God could never forget his holy promise to his servant Abraham. So God brought out his chosen ones with singing. With a joyful shout, they were set free. He gave them lands and nations just like he promised. Fruitful lands of crops they had never planted were now theirs. All this was done for them so that they would be faithful, to keep the ways of God, obeying his laws and following his truths. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hello, my name is Guy and a very good morning to you on this day, Sunday, September the 20th. And welcome to the next section in this service and if you're listening or watching this and it's not Sunday 
it's not September the 20th and it's not even the morning, well, that's absolutely fine. It's great to have you along and my hope is, as ever, that you will find something in what follows in the next 15 or 20 minutes that will be really meaningful, meaningful and helpful to you, whatever your context, whatever your situation. So we're going to be reflecting on these two passages from the Bible that we've heard read to us already today, from the, st the book of Jonah and the story of Jonah and from one of the Psalms, Psalm 105. And as an extra bonus for free, I am going to be referring to a passage from one of the early books of the New Testament, from the book of Luke, chapter 4. But more of that in a minute or two. Now, I love the story of Jonah. And one of the reasons I love the story of Jonah, because Jonah really is a bit of a mess. He really is a mess. Here we've got somebody who God has chosen. God has called and said, I I've got a job for you to do. I want you to go to the people of Nineveh and to talk to them uh, about me and about my desire to know them and be in relationship with them, but also to warn them that the way they're living and the choices they're making are stopping them being in relationship with me. Jonah doesn't like the people of Nineveh. Jonah doesn't like what God's calling him to do. And he certainly doesn't like what he thinks God is going to do for the people of Nineveh to be merciful and gracious and compassionate. It's kind of hilarious and there's loads of irony and humour in this book uh, of Jonah. And actually just a, a word about that because there are many biblical scholars that see the book of Jonah more as not as the uh, telling of a story of a real life historical figure but more of a parable. And just as Jesus spoke uh, in parables, in stories to help us understand the character of God and what it means for me and for you. Uh, he also met real people in real life situations. Well, whatever your choice, you do the research, you make your own decision about how you read the book of Jonah. But I think it really doesn't matter because there are some essential truths about the character of God that we can learn from the book of Jonah. So, as I said, we find Jonah in the passage we've had read to us where uh, God is being showing mercy and compassion and patience with the people of Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a real city. Uh, you, it would have been found in modern day Iraq, uh, not so far from Baghdad. So he looks down on the people of Nineveh and his heart's desire is to be in relationship with them, to know them. And he's called Jonah to take that message to them. Now, if there's one thing that Jonah's experience and the character of Jonah tells us, it's this. It's that the people that God asks you and me to have compassion on, to love, may seriously mess with our expectations. So get ready, because God, Jesus, God will ask us to love and to show compassion and to be in relationship with people that may mess with our expectations. And that's certainly what you find in Jonah. So as I said a moment or two ago, God has called Jonah to go to the people of Nineveh to talk to them about him. And actually Jonah has uh, tried to avoid the whole mission. He's gone off to a, another place called Tarshish and he doesn't want to come to Nineveh and he doesn't want to do what God's asking him to do. But God is patient and perseveres and just keeps going after Jonah. And eventually Jonah does get to Nineveh and he does go and tell them about God and about how God wants to be in relationship with them. He wants them to change the way they're living and make better quality decisions to get them in that relationship with God. And then we see in this passage that's been read to us, you know, Jonah is then saying to God, but you know what? I, I really don't, I just don't like what you're going to do for them because you, you're a compassionate, gracious, kind, loving God and I know what you're going to do. You're going to go and be kind and compassionate to them and I don't like the Assyrians, the people that lived in Nineveh. I don't like what they've done in their history because actually they were the sort of enemies of Jonah's people and there have been disputes and land grabs and fighting and what have you. I don't like the people, the Assyrian people, and I don't like what you're going to do for them. And Jonah therefore sort of goes off in a huff 
and he goes off and as we've heard read to us he goes and climbs a hill and he sort of sits there looking down on the hill said well I'm just going to sit here and uh, wait to see what happens to the people of Nineveh but I've got a suspicion I know what you're going to do God and God sort of pokes fun at him and he sort of says hey, are you are you happy in your rage Jonah are you happy in your rage you know you want to judge these people are you happy in that and Jonah actually goes, yeah, I am, actually. I'm very happy in this, you know. I've had enough. You know, if you want to be compassionate, the world, just get rid of me because I've had it. I've really had it with you, God, and I've had it with these people. And God actually carries on in this parable or in this story uh, the humour and the irony because Jonah sits up on the hill and then this vine grows up and shelters him from the sun that's burning down. And then God sends in the story this worm that causes the vine to die and then Jonah he's not happy to start with and then he's super not happy because he's just getting burnt by the sun and he's really uncomfortable and he's got to look at God being merciful and gracious to the people of Nineveh and you know the passage finishes with God saying hey you're getting really upset about this vine that didn't exist yesterday and then did exist and helped shelter you and now it's gone and you're all wrapped up in that and you're so wrapped up in that you don't want me God to show mercy to this huge population of the city Nineveh who I just want to be in relationship with so you've got all this irony and humor but actually all wrapped up in it it's showing God's passion to be in relationship with people to know them uh, and to be able to walk with them in the daily routines of their lives now in amongst all that I'm going to jump now just to a passage that, this passage from Luke, from chapter 4, and just hold those, if you like, those essential uh, facts from the story of Jonah and God's passion to be in relationship with people, because that's his overriding passion and purpose, is to know me and to know you and to travel with us through the daily challenges of our lives. And you know, God looked at the people of Nineveh and this amazing thing, that God, he accepts the world as he finds it, not as he would want it to be, and he accepts people, me and you, as he finds them, however messed up you and I might be. And, you know, there is coming a time, and, you know, God talks about this through his scriptures in in the book of Revelation, the, you know, the last book, um, of the Bible when he talks about well there will be a new heaven and a new earth when everything is made good and we'll live in total peace without suffering with Jesus but that's not now but God accepts the world as he finds it right now and he accepts you and me as he finds us right now and that's his passion and this is shown when God's son Jesus comes to live and do his work um, in this world well, this passage from Luke chapter 4 is a moment in Jesus' life and his sort of ministry and the work that he comes to do where Jesus is in Capernaum. Now, Capernaum, if you were thinking, if you're looking at a map of modern-day Israel, Capernaum's in the north, in the region of Galilee, with Syria off to the east, Lebanon off to the north, and Jesus has been in this town of Capernaum and many people have brought their friends and relatives and family members who are sick, who need healing, whether with mental health issues or physical health issues or all kinds of other issues. And Jesus had spent this day and he had prayed and healed many, many, many people. Anyway, at the start of the following day, Jesus, as this passage of scripture tells us, got up very early and went to a deserted place to be alone with his father, basically to pray, to speak to and listen to his father. And again, not really as an aside, but that essential significance that Jesus took time out to be one on one with his father in heaven frequently through his life. It's something that we really need to do in our daily lives is to find time to be one on one with Jesus so we can tell him how we feel tell him about the realities of our lives but also receive from him so we don't just go off doing what we think would be a good idea even if it's from the best of intentions but we can do what 
he wants us to do and we can say what he wants us to say. Because following this time that Jesus has alone with his father, the people from Capernaum, they track him down and they find him and they say, hey, look, there's loads more people uh, from Capernaum and the surrounding area that need you to come and uh, heal them and they really really want to be with you so please come follow us we'll take you to the people because I mean who wouldn't want to heal people if they could I mean who wouldn't well actually Jesus wouldn't because Jesus's response is to say actually no I need to go to another town I need to go to other places so I can tell them about who I am and why I've come and so people can be in relationship with their God so here we've got this extraordinary situation where Jesus has been healing people then he spends time alone with his father and then he knows what his priority is which is to go and tell more people about who he is and why he's come so they can be in relationship with him it's the same compassion it's the same heart that we see God telling us about through the story of Jonah when God looks down on the people of Nineveh who are living their lives far from the way God wants them to live and therefore far from being able to be in relationship with him and he calls somebody in the person of Jonah who finds it incredibly hard to show that compassion and love that God has for every people every person from all people groups from every ethnic background from whatever circumstances whatever people are wrestling with God's compassion is to know them and be with them and yes that's why again it's important for us to reflect that some of the people because of God's universal compassion for all that sometimes that will mess with our expectations because God will call us to love others and be, be the vehicle for that love, to be the means for which God, how God shows that love to others. He will ask us to be that vehicle for love to people that we maybe find it really hard to love for very good reasons, because they may have betrayed us, they may have done us harm, they may not have been very kind to us but God may well call us to be to be the vehicle through which he can show that love so watch out for having your expectations seriously messed with but also don't think that you have to do what God calls you to do in your own strength God asked Jonah to deliver a message and then just to step back and see what God would do the way only God can do it. And when we go in to this passage from Psalm 105 to reflect on that, here again we are reminded of just how God moves in people's lives and often in ways that we can't imagine but God will do things in the spiritual realm that only he can do, often moving in the supernatural. And, you know, to encourage you, often the people that seemed furthest away from God, like the people in Nineveh, often God, in order to reconcile, to bring those people back into relationship with him, God did extraordinary things. And the extraordinary things that God does are talked about in this passage from the psalm, Psalm 105. Because it starts with saying, hey, remember just how mighty God is and don't forget the things that God has done. And then it talks specifically about actually how God looked after his people when they were brought out of captivity in Egypt and when he looked after them in the desert, in the journey to the promised land. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But actually, if we think of so many of um, the people that God spoke to who were living their lives far, far away from what he hoped for and what he wants for them, 
So often God has moved in the spiritual realm. He's moved in the supernatural to do things that just speak directly to people. Because if we think of, you know, people like Daniel. Well, if you've heard of Daniel, you may remember Daniel from the lion's den and, and the story of how God saved them. But actually, if you row back a little bit in the story of Daniel, Daniel was literally far away from God in the sense that he grew up um, in Jerusalem. That was where he was from, was from. And he had been captured and taken into captivity. And he was living far away from his spiritual home and with a people that were far away from living the way God wanted them to. But God actually took Daniel and he in the spirit revealed to Daniel what the king of the people who had captured him, King Nebuchadnezzar, he revealed the truth of Nebuchadnezzar's dreams. And he used Daniel to reveal truth in these dreams. And through that, he used Daniel to be a man of great influence and significance. And the people, um, the people that had captured Daniel and taken him away from his homeland actually had the truths of God's love revealed to them. And if we look at other amazing figures um, in God's history, yeah, then we see um, this amazing woman, Esther, who, again, through prayer and through fasting, God used to move in the miraculous and a whole people group were saved from extinction when it looked impossible through them. God moving in the supernatural, in the spirit. When we think of Joseph, the man of the amazing Technicolor dream coat, well, here was a man who was sold into slavery, separated from his family, was in a prison. It looked impossible. But again, God moved in the supernatural, in the spiritual realm, and again, used him, gave him revelation of what Pharaoh's dreams really meant and through that the story of Joseph unfolds to and God uses him in incredibly significant ways to be a man of influence and to change uh, the course of events and then in this passage from Psalm 105 we hear these references to when Moses was chosen by God to be the leader who would help take, God would use to take his people out of captivity from Egypt to the promised land. And, and God says, hey, rather than speaking through the prophets that I've done through the ages, I've got an even better idea. I, God, I will be your guide. I will give you a pillar of fire in the night to follow. I will give you a cloud by day to follow. I will provide for your needs by giving you quail to eat. And these are what these references are, where God moved in the supernatural. He moved in the spiritual realm to ensure his purposes were lived out for his people. But what can we take from this? Well, actually, that God's heart and passion is to know me and to know you personally, to be in relationship with, with us in a personal way and with others. And that as we grow in those, that relationship with God, then actually he will move in the spiritual realm. We should expect him to move in our lives in a way that influences others around them, where God does what only God can do. Because if there's another principle that's revealed through these stories that Psalm 105, 105 refers to, it is this. That God chose these men and women of God and then moved in their lives, in the spiritual realm, and amazing things happened. And as these men and women of God grew in their relationship with God and in their trust, as they grew, others grew. There is a truth here that personal renewal always leads to corporate renewal that as we grow in our relationship with Jesus and as he moves in our lives others will grow but you and I grow first then others will grow and then through this we can tell our own stories we can add to those great stories referred to in Psalm 105 and we can add if you like the next stage in the stories 
from Psalm 105, where your stories and my stories, that as we grow in our faith and our walk with God, with our walk with Jesus, we will see him do great things amongst our family and friends and our workplaces, because as you and I grow, so will others grow. So I hope you'll be encouraged and you will see and be reminded just through Jonah, God's compassion for all peoples of all nations, whatever their circumstances. Prepare for your expectations to be turned upside down and maybe a bit surprised on how God uses you to live out his purposes. And remember, as you grow, others around you will grow. God bless you. Thank you, Guy, for that powerful and awesome and challenging message. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for speaking to us through your word and through Guy. We pray that you would continue to reveal to us what you want us to focus on. We ask, come Holy Spirit, have your way with us and minister to us. We ask that you would keep drawing us closer to you and that we would be more in step with you this week. Help us to remember that we function better when we stay close to you each day and we seek your presence and your wisdom. Help us to stay close to you. Soften our hearts to see and love each other the way that you see and love each of us. We pray that you would seal in us all that you have spoken into our hearts this morning and that it would take root and bear good fruit. We want to lift up our nation to you whether it's Brexit, COVID restrictions, schools reopening, we bring it all to you and we lift up our key decision makers who need your wisdom right now. We lift up nations in the world who are not safe right now through natural disasters or civil unrest, terror or poverty. Show us how to pray. Help us to remember and respond and pray. We ask you to continue to stand with the broken. Father, we thank you for Alan and Leah and their family and for bringing them to St Saviour's. We lift them to you as they start life in Sunbury. We especially pray for Alan as he prepares for his licensing on Wednesday and then for the start of his role as vicar. Would you help him find the time this week to spend with you and to be tuning in to all that you are speaking into his life at this major milestone? We ask that Wednesday would be a holy moment for all present all watching and for all of St Saviour's. Help us be a welcoming and supportive community. And we also pray for a great first week in the job too. We thank you for and are praying for our awesome wardens, Barney and Jess, who have carried the leadership of our church and so much more that goes unseen during the interregnum. Bless them, restore them and refresh them for all the ways that they have served and given out. And we pray for them as they continue to serve and we pray that you would give them wisdom and courage to step into this new season in Jesus name amen over to you Beth for our final song hey guys so as we go into our final song God gave me Psalm 101 which says I will sing of the steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord, I will make music. Now, God gave me this because in this last song, I really want you to think about the words that you're singing. The whole title of this psalm is talking about how we should walk with integrity, right? What does that look like to walk with integrity with our faith? And, you know, to have integrity is to have an uncompromising faith with Jesus. It's to sing in honesty, in spirit, in truth, you know, no matter what your circumstances are looking like, no matter what's happening in the world, we need to always be praising Jesus in the good times and the hard times. So my challenge is for you to sing the song with integrity, integrity in your worship as we come together and sing our final song.
flashed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planet is born. If the stars were made to Thank you, Beth, that was great. And thank you to everybody who's been involved in today's service. And thank you to you guys for joining us on St. Saviour's Online. Next week, we are gonna be hearing from my husband, Stephen, that guy, and he'll be bringing us the word um, next week. 
and we'll also be having a very special interview by Matt Brimble with Alan um, just after he has been licensed this Wednesday. And then in the evening, it brings us to the last of the Summer Series Sundays, or Summer Sunday Series. Um, so let me just close um, with a short blessing. And I have stolen this from a blessing that I read on the Lectio Divina app. And it goes like this. Thank you, Father, for loving us with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. Inspire us this week to love you more with all of our hearts, mind and soul. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithful and sacrificial friendship. Help us this week to be faithful and sacrificial friends like you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for listening to our many thoughts and words and dreams. Still our souls this week to listen much more carefully to yours. Amen.